Hello, I am Prof. S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Since uh, Sigma IJ prime is a second rank tensor, which uh, already we, uh, we have stated, it has a principal axis, the, the principal uh, stress deviator are the roots of the cubic equation. This also we know. Uh, we have we have looked at uh, stress and then strain. Now now it's a st stress deviator because these are all tensorial quantities. So nothing new to us. So here uh, instead of I one I two I three here it is J one J two J three or invariants of the deviator stress tensor and J one is uh, uh, simply this. Uh, and J2 is this, right? This is a principal, some of the principal minors that uh, that we have already seen. And J3 is the determinant. Sorry, let me go back. Yeah, J3 is the determinant, total determinant. So, uh, so this uh, particular um, invariant I am showing because. Uh, some of the uh, e, uh, yielding theories, right? So there are there will, we will be looking at several uh, uh, theories, uh, yield, yielding theories. So some of the yielding theories will directly note. I mean, they will simply quote this J two invariant, a J one invariant. You know that time uh, if you if you are not familiar with this, then it is a little confusing. So now that you know J two is, it is a invariant of the stress deviator matrix that we know. So, J1 is, uh, uh, is known. So, once you remember all this, these three equations and their invariants, then it is very uh, easy to appreciate later on. Okay. So, uh, we have spent considerable time on uh, the description of the stress and description of the strain and some important, uh, um, I would say, the properties of these uh, tensors and uh, and their parameters, right? Now we'll slowly get into uh, relations between uh, stress, elastic stress, and elastic strain. Please remember, we are looking at only uh, small strains, and which is purely elastics, right? So um, when we say um, elastic deformation, then it can be uh, compression as well as tension. So to take these two examples, this is an initial uh, shape of the uh, member body and which is being subjected to tensile deformation. That means the, the length increases, the, the width decreases. Similarly, this member is subjected to compression, then the length decreases the height increases. So, that is something normally we expect. This is in a pure elastic deformation. So, if we want to relate a stress tensor to the strain tensor, we must introduce material properties. The equation of this nature are called um, constitutive equations. Um, equations of this nature are called uh, constitutive relations or constitutive equations. So, what is this constitution equation we are familiar with? This is uh, a well known Hooke's law. Uh, sigma x is equal to E times x n. So, this is uh, um, a linear uh, elastic deformation. So, E is the uh, material property, mm, which is uh, modulus of elasticity in tension or compression in a linear fashion. So, the transverse strain has been found by experience to be a constant fraction of the strain, long, strain in the longitudinal direction. This is known as Poisson's ratio. Okay. So, this means uh, you can uh, express this epsilon y is equal to epsilon z is equal to minus mu times epsilon x, right? Or it can be related to the stress, which is also can be related to minus mu. The epsilon x 
can be written as sigma x by e, right. So, this is uh, a simple relation. First time we are writing a relation between uh, a st strain versus stress in a linear. For most metal mu is 0 0.33. So, this is for a single uh, dimension. So, if you are interested in developing this relation for the 3D state of stress and then we should consider uh, a similar cube where we have just looked at for a description of a stress at a point. Uh, similar geometry you can imagine where all the normal stresses sigma x, sigma y and sigma z and shear stresses were marked, okay. So, and uh, before we uh, get into the relation uh, of the stress strain in a 3D state of stress, there are some assumptions. What are the assumptions? Because the elastic stresses are small and the material is isotropic, very important, right. You have to pay attention to these details. If these are the conditions, if the material is isotropic and the elastic stresses are small, then we can assume sigma x does not produce a shear strain on the x, y and z planes and tau x, y does not produce normal strains on x, y and z planes. We can apply principle of superposition. So, under this uh, conditions, the sigma x will not have um, influence on shear strain and the shear strain will not have influence on normal strain. Then we can use a principle of superposition. So, what is that? So, this is uh, this is a table 3 by 3 uh, matrix you can create uh, using similar uh, what we have just written there for a, a stress in x direction sigma x, we can write a strain in x direction epsilon x which is sigma x by e. But the strain in y direction can be written epsilon y is equal to minus mu times sigma x by e. This is epsilon z is equal to minus mu sigma x by e. So, what does it mean? We are now uh, looking at the effect of stress in the x direction, but what its effect on or what kind of strain it will produce in y direction and z direction can be expressed with the simple relation. That is what uh, you have to look at it, okay. Similarly, you look at uh, uh, the strain uh, the stress is x normal stress that is sigma y is a normal stress in y direction. The strain in y direction is simply given by sigma y by s e, but the effect of this on uh, x direction that is if you want to see what, what kind of epsilon x it will produce or what kind of epsilon z it will produce just by the normal stress which is acting in y direction, then we get this kind of relation. So, that is uh, the beauty of this uh, uh, superposition of the strain components in the x, y, z directions. So, we can just simply write uh, uh, like this. So, uh, whatever I have just put in the table, uh, you can just uh, write it like this epsilon x is equal to 1 by e sigma x minus mu times sigma y plus sigma z, right. So, that is what it is. So, uh, so these kind of uh, relations can be written for 3 axis. So, this is called a generalized uh, Hooke's law, right. This is called a generalized Hooke's law. It is that means the stress strain relation in three dimension. Uh, so, 
the shearing stresses acting on the Q produce that is uh, tau xy is equal to g times gamma xy shear stress and shear strain and uh, this is g is a shear modulus. Similarly, in yz and xz uh, directions. Okay. So, you have um, uh, three constants now E, X modulus, G shear modulus, mu is Poisson's ratio. Uh, these are the constants involved in the stress strain relations for isotropic elastic solids. Please understand this is very important. This uh, relationships are uh, fully valid for isotropic elastic solids. And then uh, we can now look at the other relationship where this elastic constants have. Um, another constant volumetric modulus of elasticity, what is that? So, which is k. So, sigma m is uh, uh, mean stress we know, sigma m by delta, delta also we know, which is also equal to minus p by delta, which is equal to 1 by beta. What is this? Where minus p is a hydrostatic pressure and beta is the compressibility. So, these are some general relations uh, these uh, stress strain ha um, components have. So, uh, we can just try to uh, put this into perspective uh, how we can uh, write this again another relationship you have k uh, can be related uh, uh, like this and then and it, it basically what what we are trying to see is uh, we are giving trying to give another relation for um, volumetric modulus which is uh, which is con can also be written like this um, k is equal to sigma m by delta is equal to e by 3 times 1 minus 2 mu. So, all these relations will be handy if you uh, try to solve some um, uh, some small problems in the theory of elasticity. We will try to use it when it comes, especially uh, in fracture problems and uh, you know fracture mechanics for example, uh, look at uh, some of the uh, you know uh, the stress and strain states and we will be using all these uh, relations. So, another important relationship is the expression relating Young's modulus, shear modulus and mu is g is equal to e by 2 times 1 plus mu. It's all some standard relations. Okay, so now I am coming to um, another important uh, uh, topic, uh, or I would say we are looking at fundamentals. So I am introducing another uh, terminologies: plane strain and plane stress. So we so far we have looked at uh, a strain in one dimension, strain in three dimension, stress in one dimension, stress in three dimension but we did not talk about uh, a plane strain or a plane stress. So, the question is why do we do that? The, the, the problem is um, most of the engineering problems are uh, in a practical in a practical situations becomes too complex, right. So, if you make it uh, uh, a, three, a three dimensional uh, problem and reduce it to what if you reduce one dimension, the mathematical treatment can be uh, simpler you can try to solve completely mm, that is the primary reason. Mm. So, the many problems can be approximated by two dimensional approach by assuming that the stress or the strain varies only in a single plane usually in x y plane. Okay. There are two ways to create such approximations by assuming that the force normal to the plane is 0. The plane strain uh, this is called plane strain assumption. If you assume that the force normal to the plane is 0, this is plane strain assumption. Uh, the two approximations we shall continue or uh, we shall outline the plane stress um, type of analysis first. Okay. We simply uh, take uh, equation of generalized Hooke's law and put sigma x is equal to 0, then we, uh, we have just uh, developed three equations. Uh, for as a generalized Hooke's law where you put simply sigma x equal to 0 
then we get this equations right. So, I have shown three equations and if you just plug in sigma x equal to 0 then you will have this set of equation this is valid for sorry this is a, a planes stress type equation. So, uh, uh, this is exactly for uh, uh, shear strain. Uh, so, zero force in the z direction implies uh, these two components uh, become zero. Therefore, only the first of the two equation is uh, non-trivial. So, this uh, this is uh, this is a condition for the plane strain uh, problems. Uh, sorry, plane stress problems. Uh, these two equations what we have shown is a plane stress formulation. For a plane strain analysis uh, is a little more complex uh, by putting epsilon z is equal to 0, the Hooke's law gives an expression for sigma x is this and this can be substituted in the first two equations of the generalized Hooke's law involving sigma x and sigma y only, then this equation becomes like this. So, it looks a little complex, but actually it is not. If you just uh, plug in this values there, then you yourself will uh, find out that this is uh, simple to manipulate. But what is uh, important is uh, the, the new terms which will emerge, that is what you have to focus uh, by just that is, that is why this uh, plain strain analysis is a bit complex. But uh, you can just appreciate by looking at this expression, right. So, just uh, plug in this assumptions into this and then you will get finally this expression epsilon x equal to 1 minus nu square by e times sigma x minus nu by 1 minus nu times sigma y. We can simplify this. Uh, we can define a new parameter called plane strain modulus that is E prime. Uh, that is E prime is equal to E divided by 1 minus uh, mu prime square okay and uh, a quantity mu prime such as mu prime is equal to mu by 1 minus mu. Then we can write the above equation as epsilon x is equal to 1 by E prime times sigma x minus mu prime sigma y. Sigma z is equal to 0 and the above shear strain equation still applies in a plane strain. So, uh, why I have uh, brought this particular uh, uh, derivation is because you will see that wherever the uh, problems are de described, suddenly you will see that you know this uh, 1 by 1 minus new term comes or 1 by 1 minus new square terms will come in most of the fracture mechanics problems. But people just uh, do not pay attention to this. See, it will come how? So, this is how it will be. If you just work it out, then you know that, okay. So, that is because we are manipulating the Young's models. The Young's models will have some different effect in the plane strain condition and that is why we are doing this. So, so that kind of, you know, um, alertness will be useful instead of simply looking at the expression what is given in the textbook. You can just uh, derive by ourselves and then see and uh, and then get familiar with the terms. So that is the purpose of this slide. Otherwise, uh, there is no uh, significance here. So, now uh, in general in a plane strain, you can write uh, strain tensor like this epsilon xx. Um, epsilon y y and uh, epsilon x y and um, normal strain and shear strain, normal stress and shear stress. So, please remember uh, in a plane strain condition, strain tensor is 2 by 2 matrix. For a plane strain condition, stress tensor is 3 by 3 matrix. Okay. So, you get this is not 0. So, this is very important, right. We will see when we discuss in a fracture mechanics concepts. So, so it will be a, you know dimple formation 
in a crack tip when we when very high stress is at the crack tip. So, we, I will show some examples when uh, this kind of examples practical examples when we discuss that subject. So, this is a schematic for uh, plane strain and uh, real time examples are uh, rolls in the roller bearings and uh, dam section they are all considered to be a plane strain condition. And what is plane stress? Uh, this is a, this is schematic for a plane stress. Loading should be only in XY plane. And this is a stress tensor. And this is a strain tensor. Okay. So the stress tensor again, it is uh, for a plane stress. It is two by two matrix, but not the strain tensor. Strain tensor is three by three. So epsilon is that is that is not zero. So, this is again a very important point to remember, okay. So, uh, that is that these are all the introduction um, uh, to this uh, stress strain relations I just want to review and uh, uh, these are all some of the fundamentals given in all the textbooks, but some of the subtle differences, so small small details uh, uh, people do not pay attention then uh, they struggle to uh, get the idea. So, that is the idea I that is why I just uh, wanted to review this though it is simple. So, I will uh, from I will stop here today. See one uh, important point is uh, I have flipped the slides pr pretty fast and uh, if you start writing on the blackboard it is always good ok. Uh, especially when 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 we write uh, too many equations on a slide and uh, that too if you just flip it through just by reading it is very difficult to follow. So, what I what I request uh, all of you to do is uh, if you look at any of the expressions you try to write uh, first you look at the video and then try to write of your own in your notes and then see whether you are getting you are getting this expression uh, by your own derivation. So, small small relations but then you have to practice that there is no other go right. Uh, even if I try to do it on the blackboard and it will be it will take lot of time, but these are these important things uh, you have to do. And if you have any difficulties you can always uh, write to us and uh, when we have the interaction section we can uh, get some of the clarifications or you can send by email and so on. So, I do not want to dump too much of information in every uh, lecture as well. I want to go slow, but at the same time I want to give enough background before I start the subject uh, in detail. So, I will stop here from next class onwards I will do an elastic anisotropic again we are still in fundamentals we are discussing uh, the fundamentals uh, it will it will run through few more classes before I cover other topics uh, which is required as a background for this course. So, the next class I will discuss about uh, anisotropy and elastic anisotropy and then how the, the real time crystal structures will have the elastic properties ok. So, then we will slowly get into properties of materials and how the elastic deformation and then we will be using all these concepts or uh, terminologies, definitions whatever we have used so far and that will be uh, useful. That is the purpose of these uh, uh, preliminary lectures in the beginning. So, I will stop here and then uh, we will continue in the next class.